I'm Frank Martin Seifert working in uh, ESA's Earth Observation uh, Center in Frascati next to Rome. Uh, and as Martin was already saying in the introduction, I'm uh, uh, one of the uh, GFOI leads uh, uh, amongst uh, uh, um, <clears throat> within a group of nine leads. And I'd like to introduce you uh, today towards GFOI. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, so GFI was founded in 2011 uh, uh, out of GEO uh, as a GEO task and uh, became later on a GEO flagship, but uh, you might ask why GFI is needed. Uh, well, forests can play an important role in mitigating global climate uh, change, sustainable development and biodiversity protection and many other essential functions. So protecting, uh, uh, for observing the forest to protect them uh, is uh, uh, essentially, uh, is the essence of a GFI. We, uh, for, uh, we are ad, uh, advocating for better forest management by better forest monitoring. Many countries are developing uh, national forest monitoring systems and uh, also uh, specifically with respect to climate change related uh, monitoring reporting and verification systems uh, uh, to inform on their decision making uh, policy development and the reporting it's uh, over the years there's increased uh, increased demand on forest information which is uh, fortunately as well coupled with the boom of available uh, data and tools. And GFOI tries to bring those data and tools to the people who need it. But <clears throat> as I said before, uh, as uh, GFOI, uh, an organization, uh, an initiative uh, supported by nine different organizations, uh, uh, why we are doing it? Because in this global cooperation, we can achieve more than anybody of us uh, alone would uh, uh, be able to achieve. So, GFOI, a global partnership for coordinating international support to help specifically developing countries uh, to address their international and national information needs on forest monitoring uh, and greenhouse gas reporting. The core element of this is red blood. And what you see here is GFY in action. That was the last physical, can you still remember, meeting what uh, we had uh, 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 when we had a GFY plenary in Maputo in Mozambique in 2019. Below you see uh, all the GFY leads partners. So, <clears throat> With all the leads partners like the Australian Aid uh, Forest Carbon uh, uh, Partnership uh, Facilities from the World Bank, FAO, uh, CEOs, uh, uh, and then the, uh, the uh, respective ministries of UK, Germany, uh, Norway, and uh, Australia, uh, plus uh, FAO and ESA, uh, we are forming uh, the leads group. Uh, GFOI is supported by advisory group with uh, IPCC and, uh, U, uh, and the UN, specifically UNFCCC. And we are uh, supporting developing countries in establishing the National Forest Monitoring System and <clears throat> MRV system with coordinated support and uh, uh, to achieve an output on better information on forest change and the resultant greenhouse gas, <clears throat> gas emissions and removals, uh, which can be uh, not only used for, cl uh, for climate and reporting, but as well uh, internally <clears throat> for internal activities within the countries. And uh, uh, this information goes towards uh, the UN, UNFCCC in particular, but it's as well uh, a support towards the sustainable development goals. There, uh, specifically uh, uh, development goal, uh, life on land 15.2 related to forests. The World Bank Green Climate uh, Fund, FAO, with its uh, vast activities related to forest, uh, forestry, and of course, any national policy and decision making uh, within the countries. The four GFI components, and Martin mentioned <clears throat> 
uh, we are here within uh, this research and development uh, 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 workshop organized uh, with uh, uh, from the R&D component. We have as well the method and guidance documentation, uh, the capacity building and data coordination. These all working together and coordinated uh, by the GFOI uh, office makes the core and the pillars of GFOI. GFOI activities at a glance. Uh, you see uh, to the left down uh, the map of activities where we are putting uh, where we uh, are putting information on uh, available satellites, activities uh, in uh, direct interaction with the countries. They are. Uh, more than 450 activities over the last decade with 70 partners worldwide. We are as well offering webinar series related to forestry, setting up forest uh, a national forest management system and <clears throat> specific technical. There are 10 online forestry courses and towards the right on the top uh, you see uh, the method and guidance uh, document, which was uh, <coughs> released in English last year in August and now is available as well in French and Spanish and used regularly in over, than, uh, over 50 countries uh, uh, with respect uh, to forest monitoring. Additionally, I would like to uh, mention Norway's free satellite data program, which is uh, now active since a couple of months, uh, which <coughs> specifically within our R&D uh, activity can support and advance our R&D activities, but of course uh, uh, will be used in the operational monitoring of uh, forest within the uh, tropical countries. This workshop is an overview <clears throat> and a taking stock of the current situation on uh, forest uh, monitoring. <laughs> Sorry, interruption. Uh, the the topics are uh, red with the deforestation and the forest degradation, regrowth, national uh, uh, near real time monitoring of forest, uh, biomass estimation, uncertainty analysis, land use, and greenhouse gases. All these topics will be addressed within our workshop. We will see if others are emerging and how uh, wh where are the gaps and where we sh should concentrate in the future. If you want to know more uh, or join GFY, uh, please find here the website and uh, the respective social media. And with this, I'm handing back to Martin. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Omar. Thanks, Martin, for the introduction. I would like to give an overview on this Red Copernicus project, which will be subject uh, for further discussions on the research needs. But that's, uh, I want to give um, a brief overview. And Baudouin uh, de Glee, after my presentation, will give you more details on these proposed future services. This is a project which is um, initiated and financed uh, by the Euro Co European Commission under the Horizon 2020 work program, and it's a collater collaborative um, action, and it's giving advice to the Commission what kind of service uh, is needed in the future. So the, this project is implemented by a European consortium. I'm personally, I'm from GAFAG. Uh, we are the coordinators of this project. Uh, we have as partners the Joint Research Center with Frederic Achard and his team around. We have CLS, uh, we have the, um, the Wageningen University, and we have uh, VTT on board. So I'm giving this presentation on behalf of this consortium. And um, the context of this project is there, everybody knows there is uh, the Sentinels uh, in the Copernicus program is one pillar. Uh, of the Copernicus program. Another pillar is uh, services which are developed by the Co uh, European Commission, ranging from atmosphere, marine, land, climate change, security, and emergency. And all these services um, are free of charge and openly accessible. The same um, of the potential products, what we are talking about, they will be freely available. The 
context um, how this project um, was established is that Euro uh, Europe has, of course, also um, uh, huge commitments uh, to become climate neutral by 2050. But there is also the European Green Deal, who mentions the importance of addressing deforestation globally, not only in Europe. And additionally, in 2019, the European Union's action to protect forest and restore the world's forest was published. There was even uh, a, 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 in, um, a resolution passing the European Parliament, uh, which already refers to a future Copernicus Red Plus service, which can support the global and regional forest monitoring. So, and then finally, in the Horizon 2020 work program, uh, this, this collaborative, uh, collaborative action was, uh, was published and this consortium has actually reacted with a proposal and won this tender and is implementing this project since 2019. I do not go into detail here once more. You see that is a, 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 a joint activity between these partners and uh, this project is funded by the European uh, Horizon program. So objective of this Horizon uh, project is uh, to define an end-to-end -end operational system. So I, I'm not talking about research and development for a core and downstream service, which includes organizational and technical specifications. I will come back to this core and downstream. That is actually a jargon which is in, well known in Europe, uh, but it needs explanation what that means. And uh, the whole activity includes the coordination and consolidation of a European capacity for Earth observation based forest monitoring. That means, is there enough capacity uh, already there, which can lead into an operational uh, production, but also the collaboration with potential users, stakeholders, international donors, um, and other agencies, research community, and private sector. But we have also an accompanying task. Uh, when we when we identify, of course, capacity, we are also close to the analysis. What are the gaps already there? And Sarah will talk on this uh, later this day on this. So the future red and core and downstream service. I just make a short uh, introduction. What is core? A core service uh, on this continental or global uh, scale. Uh, it would comprise of a generic product with geospatial parameters that have the utility to support forest monitoring or activity data assessment, but might still need adjustments to national and subnational circumstances. That means we cannot produce a product which is suiting everybody in the world, but having core elements which can be uptaken by downstream service. Downstream is then in the countries, in the region, you can use these products and adapt these products to your specific requirements. And um, that can also then co uh, uh, can cover then capacity building or country specific products. This is considered to be, um, let's say, having this economy of scale and reducing project cost, uh, because already all this pre-processing is already done and it facilitates then the implementation of the downstream service in the countries. So the uh, process for specification, we have a proposal for these potential future products, but this was not falling from heaven. We, we started with a design uh, and an initial uh, technical specification. We shared this with counterparts in the, uh, in the Red Plus countries and consolidated at the end this specification. So it started with policy and user requirements, the assessment of the technical capacity in Europe, so we came then up with an initial design. Uh, we also uh, had then feedback mechanism and engaged with the red user countries and then came up with the consolidation of these proposed services, which will most likely uh, in a form being produced in the next uh, year. So here a bit more on the process. How did we come? from initial concepts to initial design and finally to a consolidated uh, product proposal. At the beginning, we did an intensive requirements and policy review. Uh, we, we, we analyzed also existing methods, tools, and had then a first user and stakeholder workshop 
in June 2019, where all the stakeholders from, from the banks, from uh, the Red Plus countries uh, and NGOs were present. So then we could come up with broad concepts, which comprised of remote sensing images, global land cover, land fire, forest status and change, forest cover change in real, real time, uh, forest disturbances and toolboxes. Still rather generic. Uh, and we made then a review after that in November 2019 on uh, the capacity to produce that. So we came then up with a benchmarking concept uh, and proposed then in June 2020 an initial design of uh, this, this project. And it becomes now more, let's say, more precise and ranging from Sentinel-2 images composites and the tree cover change, pan-tropical tree cover density, forest disturbance alerts and geoportal. And with this, we went then into so-called learning exercises with users. So we, we went back to the stakeholders, we organized regional workshops with them. Uh, and based on the feedback, we came then up with a consolidated design. So in this consolidated design has now Sentinel-2 annual, annual composites, tree cover density product, tree cover presence and seasonality, tree cover presence and change, and tree cover disturbance. The um, uh, Baudouin after me will illustrate a bit more about these products. I give you only an, an overview, and I would like to stress and emphasize that these services, they were not just invented by us, they was, were not falling from heaven, they were really bit used uh, through the stakeholder engagement. We have always, when we, uh, when we have these stakeholder workshops, we showcase these products, collected them the feedback on these proposed concepts, and obtained then also the user endorsement for the proposed Copernicus service. So that is actually, it was really uh, elaborated together with the stakeholders. And we did four regional workshops online, COVID was a bit of blockage. We had actually in mind physical workshops. We could do one in Brazil before the COVID time. And then we had to implement four regional workshops in Central Asia, East Africa, Southeast Asia, Southern Africa in, the la in, in September, October in 2020. And uh, we have also information for you. Uh, you, can, you can look at these products on our web front end, Red for Few, which was developed to showcase these geospatial products in these learning exercises, but you still can have access to this through this link. Um, and the benefits of this Copernicus service is considered to have multiple benefits, not only for Red, uh, Red Plus, but also uh, for the EU action to protect forest and restore the world forest, of course, the UNFCC Red Plus process, the UN Sustainable Development Goal 15, uh, the Bond Challenge, but also the UN uh, Decade on Ecosystem Restoration. So there is multiple benefit of these products, and it should, um, it should have a strong potential to strengthen the global, the regional, and in-country in capacity for forest monitoring. So the Finally, um, it's worthwhile to have a look on this website. There is a lot of documents and presentations downloadable. Um, you can have access to this geo portal where you can, uh, can look at this uh, showcase products. Uh, when you go on this uh, web portal, uh, we still have to give you a personalized access. You can then email to us to forestry at GAF and you will then get get very quickly your personalized uh, access uh, data. So I thank you very much. I'm very happy to, to be with you today. Um, so um, here I would like to um, present you the specification for this uh, future Copernicus Forest Monitoring Service and the feedback from the, the Repus user. So this has been uh, uh, prepared with uh, on behalf of the the Red Copernicus uh, consortium team, um, <clears throat> and uh, we and uh, I'm working on on the Jersey uh, side. 
OK, so let's go to the uh, second uh, slide. So um, my follow my uh, presentation, we follow this uh, different points. So I will just uh, um, uh, remind you some elements that are already um, mentioned by Thomas about the processing uh, the process for the specification definition. Then I will go to the learning side, so to understand better that uh, crucial uh, step uh, in the specification definition and describe you the, the specification that are proposed uh, for the, the future service with the description of the core product and the link between the core product with the potential derived services. And then uh, finally, I will uh, So first, um, I come back to this. Um, so first, I, I come back to this slide um, already present by uh, Thomas, um, just to uh, show you that we are focused now um, on um, this uh, learning exercise to. Uh, um, to uh, to present the initial design to the user and then to get their feedback to consolidate that service um, that we are uh, currently um, uh, proposing the, the specification uh, within the, that project. So the learning exercise uh, were um, taking place uh, during September to November 2020 with seven workshop with more than uh, 100 participants and um, from uh, 16 countries and with uh, 35 um, institutions. So, um, and during these uh, workshops, we were uh, presenting some prototype products that we um, propose for uh, this uh, future service. Uh, as you can see on the, the screen, uh, some illustration for the Sentinel-2 global mosaics, the, the tree cover density, the tropical moist forest, the BFAST, the FCDM, or the radar forest cover alerts. So these were proposed, and uh, and uh, we we provide some demonstration case on specific study site for all uh, regions um, regions uh, where um, this workshop uh, were taking place. Um, and these were included in this uh, geoportal, um, so that was already mentioned by Thomas, um, where you can have uh, an access. And so you can see on the screen uh, some illustration of the the forest type uh, product, for example, or the TCD products. So and you can um, uh, overlay the different uh, product to compare and to analyze them. But um, what was also crucial during this learning exercise is to collect the, the, the feedback from the user. So at the end of each session, um, the user were invited to provide the, the feedback and to, um, uh, to answer to some question and, and, and then to submit this uh, survey uh, for each of the, the session, but also to have a, a, a general overview of the different type of uh, product that are, were presented. So um, these were uh, very valuable information. And then we analyzed this result and uh, draw some uh, main uh, uh, feedback, uh, main uh, message from them. So the, the, the first main message was uh, that um, the, all these uh, presented products were very relevant for the Red Plus and the Sustainable Forest Management Monitoring. So in fact, um, there are a variety of users and all products were of interest. So we cannot drop one of the product, but um, and, and there is a request also to have an applicability of this product for both uh, humid and dry uh, tropical uh, with equal importance. The special resolution, uh, they were requesting to have um, um, this uh, 10 meter resolution was found very adequate for several um, uh, applications. So this is corresponding to the Sentinel-2 and, and one uh, sensor. The temporal resolution, um, so for a red plus reporting, the annual uh, frequency was found uh, very uh, sufficient for, the, this, uh, for, uh, for this reporting. 
but for near real time alerting system, uh, weekly uh, frequency were expected to, to be provided for the national monitoring system. So for the sensor types, um, a combination of both optical and radar image were um, uh, important. But um, for the calibration and validation, higher resolution um, were requested. And so here we can see that the NIC fee planet mosaic could be uh, of use of this um, for this uh, specific uh, task. So it's quite crucial also to use this kind of information. So the adjustment of, of the, 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 the product to the specific needs is necessary uh, for the national definition. And so the tree cover information is crucial. Uh, so, and finally, the platform and services. Uh, we have seen that, um, in fact, the user were requesting uh, both cloud-based and desktop-based uh, solution in order to allow them to work uh, offline. So based on all uh, this uh, feedback uh, you see on, on the right from the different um, uh, tropical regions, uh, we could um, consolidate the initial design that were proposed at the beginning. So here you can see the proposal for the uh, specification for the, the forest monitoring uh, core products. Um, so you can see the, and there is this uh, Sentinel-2 annual composites, the trick of our density, the trick of our presence and seasonality, trick of our presence change, the trick of our disturbance, and the GIS analytical tools. So um, don't be afraid because we will go through the different um, um, uh, product to, to give you some key um, information of these products. So first, for the analysis ready uh, Earth observation data, so we have the um, Sentinel-2 annual composites, which is uh, in fact an analysis ready image, uh, cloud-free, uh, with 10 meters spatial, spatial resolution and with a minimum of six spectral bands with a, a level of processing of L1C or L2A. And um, with annual composite or also uh, for a specific region with high seasonality, um, quarterly uh, composites. On the GIS analytical tools, so here we we see some uh, um, requests for some functionalities uh, that uh, were requested by the user in terms of uh, viewing the, um, the data, but in terms of uh, handling the vector and the raster data, of course, but also in combining, but most of uh, it to provide automatic reporting, but also to modify these monitoring uh, properties. So if you go to the, uh, the forest status um, information, um, we can see here that there is uh, a real interest for the, the tree cover density um, uh, product. So it's a, a status map for reference year, uh, for example, 2020, with uh, potential updates every three or five years. Uh, so a product of 10 meter spatial resolution and with a range of zero to um, uh, 100 percent. So there is no minimum mapping units and it's a pixel based uh, product. Based on that, we have also um, a trick of a presence and seasonality. So this product is also a status map for reference here with potential updates, 10 meters, and it's based on the trick of a density range from 10 to uh, 100 uh, per, uh, percent. So here there is uh, three um, uh, thematic classes like evergreen um, and uh, seasonal uh, um, tree cover and uh, non-tree non, non cover. We have also um, the forest cover change information, which is uh, proposed to be uh, the TCPC, so the tree cover present change. So with a change map of um, annual basis or with more frequent timing for another system, uh, still 10 meter spatial resolution, TCD range from 10 to 100 percent, and still no mapping unit pixel base. And here with um, four uh, uh, thematic class, like the, the new trick of our presence or the loss of trick of our presence. 
and uh, and change um, uh, trick over or uh, and change non trick over. Um, about disturbance, we propose a trick over disturbance um, product, which are TCD disks, um, which is change a map. Uh, 10 meters for special resolution, TCD from 10 to 100 percent. And um, we have here two thematic classes, which is disturbance or not disturbance. So um, the main difference between these two products is that the first, the CPC is more focused on the, the, the change um, from uh, forest to uh, unforest or for so the, the kind of deforestation or regrowth. Whereas the, the TCD is to uh, identify the, the, the change, uh, the, the small scale uh, change within the, the, the forest. So basically the, the, the forest degradation or the, this uh, other kind of uh, forest changes. So based on these different products, uh, we also have um, identified some uh, potential derived services that could be proposed uh, by other uh, service provider um, based on these core products, uh, like the customization of these existing services or the adjusting the composite or the, the forest mask or uh, having the distinction of the tree cover change, but also the production of higher level products uh, like the uh, refined long cover classification using national classification scheme or the discrimination between forest loss or uh, harvesting, um, uh, uh, the discrimination between planted natural forest or tree-based crops, uh, identification of driver behind the events, or the assessment of greenhouse gas emission and for uh, forest changes. So this is um, a, a, a proposal, but um, it's not uh, exhaustive. Um, and it's to 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 uh, identify that there is a possibility to uh, derive some uh, other services that will not be provided by the the Copernicus services, but by uh, other service provider. So as a conclusion, so uh, we have been um, um, implemented a learning exercise step within these projects to um, present the initial design and the, the technical specification of the, the different products. We have been collecting the, the user feedback and it was uh, really helpful to consolidate the specification. So uh, the proposed specification for this product, so uh, this service to be launched uh, in the near future, is to have uh, this core uh, uh, product so as, as mentioned during this uh, presentation, but also to have a uh, potential uh, several uh, derived services. But finally, it's important to note that there is an identification uh, of uh, remaining already uh, activities or topics to support the implementation of uh, such a service. So for example, degradation, there is uh, some kind of degradation that are already be uh, identified and could be already assessed. But also, um, uh, so other uh, specific uh, degradation. So, and also about the dry domain to uh, support the, 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 the production of uh, change information on that uh, domain. So, that's why this uh, workshop is very uh, important for us to really uh, identify these uh, activities and to really uh, help this uh, Copernicus service to be um, uh, operational and to provide very valuable and good quality information. So uh, let me uh, remind you the, the web link to access the, the, the learning style presentation and the geo portal. And thank you very much for your attention and I will be happy to try to answer to your question. Hello everyone, um, I'm going to briefly talk about the R&D progress and gaps for tropical forest monitoring that we've already identified as part of the Red Copernicus project. So first I'm going to define R&D gaps in the context of this project and we consider this to be the difference between what users and policies need and what is available and is operational and in the context of this project specifically, what can be integrated as part of a service component. So first, what do users and policies need? 
So there are a number of policy needs which we identified as being relevant for tropical forest monitoring in the context of Red Plus and wide air forest management. Um, a lot of these relate to greenhouse gas accounting frameworks, such as those in the context of UNFCCC, and they also cover things like the Sustainable Development Goals um, and European forest policies as well that relate to tropical timber and so on. As I mentioned, a lot of reporting needs are related to the UNFCCC climate agreements, particularly um, the Paris Agreement. And as you can see from this slide, the amount of reporting which is required by countries um, is quite intensive. Countries need to report regularly, for example, every five years as part of NDCs, and they also need to contribute to um, biannual reporting. Um, so there's a big uh, need for very regular data. Information on forests is also required for policy development, policy assessment, and different information is needed at different uh, times in this policy cycle, which is shown on the left of the slide. So moving from policies and to users, as part of the project, we involved a number of different user types, for example, donors, Red Plus country users, the research community, NGOs and private sector organizations. And we leveraged networks, including the GFOI and also Goffsey Gold in order to reach out to all these stakeholders. And we also built upon previous user needs assessments, which had already been done. For example, those done through Goffsey Gold and GFOI. We utilized an online survey, which was funded by DG Klima, and this had over 820 respondents. And a big part of the survey covered Red Plus countries and also needs related to their monitoring of greenhouse gas emissions and from land activities. So this was very relevant. We also implemented a survey, survey as part of the project, um, targeting specific stakeholders. And we had a workshop in 2019 where we could elaborate on some of the points which we got from the surveys and have deeper discussions on those user needs. The user workshop was very well attended. We had a lot of different organizations represented, including uh, the people from many Red Plus countries. And we were able to present the user needs to the stakeholders to gather their feedback and also to gather user needs which we didn't capture in our um, surveys and so on. And we gathered information on the type of data which would be required to support forest monitoring in the context of RED. And that included, for example, biomass and change maps, forest type maps, and participants were able to suggest other um, data products that we hadn't included in, in the, our polls. Um, and we captured those through the use of post-it notes and a really nice interactive discussion, as you can see from the picture on the slide. So we didn't just capture information on the type of products or data that was required to support forest monitoring, but also on how this will be put together in a service. And this can be summarized as a long term, easy to access and open set of products and services. Uh, some of the characteristics should be that transparent data, open methods and free access would be assured. Also the flexibility to adapt products to national needs and definitions. The platform should be easy to use with a sufficient documentation and users should be engaged in the whole process, including co-creation and validation of products. Lastly, but perhaps most importantly, capacity building would be required to ensure correct use and uptake of the service. That was a brief summary of the user and policy needs. And now I'm going to discuss what is available and is operational and could be, could be integrated into the service. In order to assess the operationality of potential products which could go into a service, we used the CALM framework, which was developed by GFOI 
and is based on NASA's application and technology readiness levels. It defines the operational le level or maturity level of concepts, which includes, for example, data and methods which would go into such a service. The framework lists milestones and supporting information which is required to demonstrate that a level of, level of maturity has been met. The previous slide showed the first three levels, which were the research levels, um, and this slide shows the pre-operational levels, which are level four to six. And this shows the operational levels, levels seven to nine. And in the context of this project, we considered concepts, so methods, data, etc., which were at levels seven to nine as suitable for inclusion into a service. What we're interested in the context of this workshop is um, concepts which are not in the operational level, which are in the research or pre-operational level. And I'm going to briefly just show you the kind of information that we gathered about the potential methods and so on, which could go into such a service. First, we assess data and products. And you can see here the example of capacities and the CALM level of those capacities that we assessed. And here are more data and products and the CALM level. We also assessed methods and tools for their level of operationality and platforms. Consideration for the R&D gaps was what will be integrated as part of a service component. component. And just to remind you, these are the six elements of the core products which were presented in an earlier session. So in order to assess the R&D priorities for forest monitoring in support of Red Plus and other initiatives, we firstly looked at findings from existing sources, including those related to this project. So for example, from the stakeholder workshop. We also looked at the GFOI R&D component and their list of priorities, the country needs assessment from the GFOI and information from GFOI partners. We also contacted the UNFCCC and got some information about their technical review process and potential R&D gaps, which were highlighted from that. We additionally did a scientific literature review where we studied recent scientific literature, including proceedings from four conferences and the Scopus database. And finally, we used a systematic approach to assess priorities, and we used three criteria to rank the priorities in an order, and I'll explain more about this in a moment. So firstly, some information about the R&D needs from existing sources of literature. Firstly, from the stakeholder assessment, we found that there are several data requests which would require R&D. For example, Currently, biomass change maps, which cover the whole of the tropics with a frequent coverage, are not available. Also, um, ground data for validation is something that came up and was required for the use of many Earth observation products. Other requests include information on degradation drivers, both biotic and abiotic, including things like fire which are not readily available as well. Stakeholders also gave information about their R&D needs in terms of methods that were available for the use, correct use of Earth observation data. And these include things like clear methods and guidance on uncertainty and accuracy assessments and how to derive area estimates from change maps. On the platform side of things, Although users' needs were largely met by available platforms, a one-stop shop where data could be accessed, analysed, and there could be access to technical support was something which was requested by users. When we did the CALM assessment of the available concepts, data, methods, tools, etc., we asked the capacity developers 
to rate what the most important R&D needs for their capacity were. So things which were preventing their capacity from moving from research to pre-operational or pre-operational until operational. Um, and a number of things were mentioned, for example, the access to the data which were required, for example, to produce a product um, or the, the analysis, so the processing or even the pre-processing. But the main barrier was the country uptake, which is needed for the capacity to reach this operational level that it's demonstrated um, and used operationally within the tropical context. So going back to the concepts which we assess for their operationality, I've just extracted here the concepts which are either at the research level, so one to three on this CALM scale, or at the pre-operational scale, so four to six. And these are the concepts where further research would be required um, so that they do reach operationality. So these could be seen as R&D needs I mentioned that we uh, asked the UNFCCC what they saw as the research needs that emerged from their technical assessment process when countries submit information to them on their greenhouse gas emissions and removals. And a few things came out as being important research needs. So just to highlight a few, one is the calculation of trends for the forest reference emission levels. So this is more of a methodological um, element. There are other things in terms of data needs. So how to not just gather land cover information, but also how to get land use information. And that's really often a research step to go from one level to another. And there are some other needs mentioned there. GFOI undertook a country needs assessment which looked at gaps in the country uh, forest monitoring systems and Red Plus MRV tasks. The themes where countries had the most gaps were integration and estimation, where all countries had at least one task missing, and also uncertainty estimation. But as you can see, most countries had other missing tasks in the categ other categories. And it's important to note that the distribution of these missing tasks is not the same across all areas of the tropics. Um, and you can see some differences between Africa, Southeast Asia and Latin America in these themes that are missing. As I mentioned, we use the scientific literature review to assess R&D gaps. And this has been published recently in an article in remote sensing. Based on some keywords and search criteria, including remote sensing, deforestation, forest monitoring, we identified papers which addressed forest monitoring in the 25 countries with the most tropical forest, which were published between 2018 and 2020, either in Scopus or in relevant conferences. And it was clear that some areas, so some countries, some forest types were not as well covered by the literature as others. The figure in the slide shows on the top, multi-country, so either global, pantropical or regional studies. And the one in the bottom shows um, studies which were carried out in either one country or two adjacent countries, for example. We also looked at what the theme was of the research. And as you can see, research which focused on activity data or land use and land management information were the most frequent types of papers or um, conference proceedings and those which focus on analysis ready data and near real time information were the least focused on so there you might imagine um, research could be more um, of a focus and you can also see that across the tropics some countries were the focus of more research than others and this varies across the research types. The sensors which were used in the studies was also captured and you can see that Landsat, Sentinel, other satellites and also multi-sensor images were used but the use of this across the tropics really varies as well. And finally we captured information on the affiliation of the first author from all the papers 
and we found that in many cases the first author was not from the country in which the study was carried out. Um, so you can see here that there were a few countries where there were many authors who did author a study from their country, for example Brazil, India really stand out. And there are some countries where the, there was no studies where the first author was from that country itself. This can be seen as a research gap stimulating um, researchers from the tropical countries themselves to at least be the, the first author of a paper, although of course they could have been co-authors on these papers. So finally, using all the information which I discussed, we were able to rank the priority of some of these research, potential research topics. We considered the relevance for RED, so this was based on the policy analysis, the stakeholder needs, which was based on the user needs analysis. We also evaluated the amount of research which is available, which was based on the literature review I just discussed, and then whether it was part of the proposed service. So although this is just one way of looking at it, but if we do use those criteria which were in the table before, we can come up with some research priorities. These are methodological issues such as extraction of statistics from maps, uncertainty assessments, high resolution sampling data. This may include, um, for example, the planet data, so this may be mitigated, but ground data is also something which the users asked for, and that is required to ensure correct use of Earth observation data. Forest ch biomass change information is always um, something which comes up from the user assessments and came up from this as well. And finally, moving from activity data and emissions factor, emissions factors, but towards models for estimating greenhouse gas emissions and removals is something where research may play a big part. So what are the next steps in this? Well, firstly, and perhaps most importantly, we have the stakeholder workshop, this workshop which we are in at the moment. So we really look forward to getting your inputs on what the research priority should be, and we'll take on board all suggestions. So please feel free to contribute to discussions and also contact us after the meeting in case you'd like to share any ideas with us specifically. We also have a special session in the IGARS conference, which is coming up. We have a special issue in remote sensing open at the moment where we would like to hear about new scientific developments um, in forest monitoring research. And we will continue to review um, scientific literature more generally. Thank you for your attention. So I'd like to just briefly introduce to you what the workshop is about and how we're going to proceed. The objective of the workshop is fourfold. To assess current R&D progress for tropical forest monitoring, identify remaining R&D gaps, to develop concepts to address those gaps, and finally to produce a list in order of priority of gaps and potential actions which can be used to address those gaps. To do this, we're bringing together experts on tropical forest monitoring. I'll go into this in a bit more detail later, but just briefly, what are R&D gaps in the context of this project? And we consider them to be the difference between what users and policies need and what's available and is operational and what will be integrated in part of this proposed service component, which was just discussed. And what R&D concepts are we talking about? This could be new methods or tools, but it could also be data sets and products. And it can be platforms which are used to um, access data, manipulate data and produce results. So to discuss these gaps, we're going to break out into themed groups. Um, and these themes are degradation and regrowth, biomass, early warning, uncertainty analysis, and land use and greenhouse gases. There'll also be one session which focuses on how to systematically assess new research priorities and how to use this information, communicate on up and coming research, and how to move it from 
the research to the operational level. Breakout groups will be 90 minutes each. There will be several short pitches, just five to seven minutes each, which will be played. Um, these have been submitted by experts on the themed topics already. And then there'll be an open discussion where those pitches and also other research priorities within that theme can be discussed. And the idea is to come up with a list of priorities from each themed session. This list will then be presented in a plenary session where there'll be five to 10 minutes per group um, for the co-chair of that themed session to present the list of priorities. And then in this plenary session, we'll discuss overall priorities. Online, you can find the agenda for the workshop, which includes links to join all the sessions. The agenda for day one um, has three different links. The first link at the top is the link that is the one you're in at the moment, and is also the link in the agenda invite if you downloaded that to your online calendar. That allows you to join all the plenary set discussion sessions, so all the ones before the parallel session and also the plenary discussion afterwards. To join the break breakout groups, you'll need to use the link specific to each session, and they are all different links. So please make sure that you click on the, the link for the preferred breakout group, and you can choose which one you want to join. So today we have two breakout groups, degradation and regrowth, and biomass, and you can join one or the other because they're in parallel. And tomorrow again, there's a link at the top which allows you to join all the plenary sessions, so the short one before and then also the ones after the breakout groups. And for each of the breakout groups, there's a separate link again that you can join, use to join those meetings. As you see, there's uh, two parallel sessions, each with two breakout groups, so you can join either early warning or uncertainty analysis, and then either land use and greenhouse gases or the GFY R&D session. So the outputs from the workshop should be a synthesis of recent R&D progress, a list in order of priority of R&D needs, and this should be based on a clear set of criteria which has been used to determine the order of priority. Depending on um, commitments from participants, there may be a plan for working together collaborati collaboratively on one or more of the priority topics. And finally, there'll be from the GFOI side, um, an agreed upon approach to collecting and assessing information on upcoming research. And beyond this workshop, there'll be several opportunities where you can get more involved in these discussions. We have a session on this theme in the IGARS conference in Brussels. So if you're joining that conference, please feel free to join our session. We have um, a special issue open in the journal Remote Sensing. It's open to, until the end of August, and we would really welcome any uh, articles which focus on national red plus monitoring, monitoring and reporting so very much related to the things we're going to discuss in this conference and finally at the gfy plenary there'll also be some r&d themed sessions so please feel free to join that plenary thank you for your attention